Hello, and welcome back to Garfonomics, the world's best official, unofficial Garfield-based economics and politics podcast. Today, I have a special episode for you. Funnily enough, something actually exciting happened in the world of economics, or as most Americans understand in economics, in the realm of finance, specifically the stock market itself. And we'll get to that right after today's comic. It's been a while since we've done a daily comic. I thought this would be a great opportunity to go back to it. So I'm pulling up the comic Garfield by Jim Davis for January 26th, 2021. We've got a three panel comic here, two characters, Garfield and John. In the first panel, John says, Garfield? Do you know what happened to this plate of donuts? And you can see there's an empty plate with appears to have some kind of crumbs or something on it. And you see Garfield, he's thinking, oh, a guessing game. In the middle panel, Garfield thinks to himself, abducted by aliens, ran away to join the circus. In the final panel, Garfield thinks, Maybe they're plotting a takeover with the tater tots. And John says, sometimes I'm glad I can't understand you. So that's pretty funny. This is a pretty good comic. I quite enjoyed that. Um, and it also answers a long-standing Garfonomics question that we've had for a long time now, which is, can John understand Garfield? You can see clearly from today's comic. No, he cannot. He says, sometimes I'm glad I can't understand you. Garfield is talking to himself all the time. Anyways. GME. AMC. Blackberry. What do all of these have in common? They're meme stocks. Shitty meme stocks at that. Why am I talking about shitty meme stocks? Well... Unless you've been living under a rock for the past couple of weeks, you surely know that a bunch of organized internet hooligans have exacerbated the price of these stocks with nefarious intent, and it has made headlines all over the world. And many of you might be thinking, why did this happen? A lot of people ask, why in the world did this happen? And the reason they ask that is because they're getting their information from the news, which I never recommend, or they're getting their information from their economics professors at university, which I also don't re recommend. The only economist you should be listening to is Garfonomics. Garfonomics is your economist. Everything else is a third-rate economist who doesn't know what they're talking about. Drop your economics classes, drop econ, drop finance, drop it all. Just listen to Garfonomics. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to explain what happened because there's a lot of misinformation out there and there's also a bunch of idiots online, especially on subreddits like Wall Street Bets, that don't really know what they're talking about. So what happened here? So a lot of people think that this happened starting a couple weeks ago, kind of late January, January 20th, 21st, around that time. I got a message from one of my friends. Let's see when it was sent. It was sent January 21st, 2021. And he had sent me a screen printout of a comment on a subreddit on the famous Reddit website the subreddit of Wall Street Bets, and the comment was, as you would expect, the ravings of a lunatic. But the ravings of the lunatic were logically sound, and they were talking about doing a short squeeze on GameStop stock. Now, my friend sent this to me because he asked, is this viable? Could this happen? Is what they're saying make any sense? And I said, yes, it does make sense, but it also sounds like the ravings of a Wall Street Bets poster and, you know, do with that what you will. It's a toss up, really. 
Now, little did I know, because I hadn't known this at the time, but infamous Wall Street Bets poster, Deep Fucking Value. Also, well, I should say, AKA Roaring Kitty on YouTube, AKA Keith Gill in real life, had actually propositioned a short squeeze for GameStop over five months ago, around August of 2020. He, you can go back, you can go to YouTube, you can see August 21st, 2020, Roaring Kitty. He puts out this short summary video outlining some of the reasons why a short squeeze on GME or GameStop could be possible in the near future, causing an explosion of value. Now, obviously, with everything that's happened, Keith is being investigated by the SEC for manipulation, but securities attorneys generally say that if you invest in a position and advocate for it just because you believe in the company, that you should be fine. So I don't expect that he won't be able to wriggle out of it, though I do not not expect he did not have manipulation intent. And I'm pretty sure he was out there stoking the flames for this. So a lot of you might be asking, what is a short squeeze? We are getting into finance. We're getting into economics today, baby. We're going to talk about numbers. We're going to talk about the stock market. And I'm going to simplify it down. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to go with you and explain why this happened. So a short squeeze. A lot of people say, what the hell is a short squeeze? Garfonomics, please. I need to know. It's keeping me up at night. I don't know what these finance nerds are talking about. And I say to them, you're better off for it. You're more sane. You don't know what they want to be talking or you don't want to be knowing what they're talking about. But in case, in case you protest, you push me away, you say Garfumonomics, I don't care. I want to know. Well, keep listening and I will explain it. Believe it or not, I do actually have a master's in economics and finance. So now's my time to shine, baby. So here's what a short squeeze is. This is when a stock or an asset jumps sharply in value. So a, a, a stock, an asset, it jumps up and this forces traders who are betting that the price was actually going to fall to buy it in order to prevent greater losses down the line before that price starts getting too high for them to be able to buy it back. So this ultimately becomes a race to buy the stock, which actually ends up only causing more upward force to be applied to the stock's price. So now you might be asking, aha, I know what a short squeeze is. Um, excuse me, Professor Garfonomics, what is a short? And then I sigh and I start considering whether you should be passing Garfonomics at all. But a short really is, it's basically just a bet. It's a gamble. It's a gamble that a stock price is going to go down. Essentially what a short is, uh, a put option, what you're doing is you want to borrow stock from somebody. You say, hey, Bob, I want to borrow 10 shares of your shitty GameStop stock, right? And I'm going to pay you a little fee. I'm going to pay you a little bit of money to make it worth your while. And then you're going to give me your shitty GameStop stock or your shitty GameStop stock. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to immediately sell the stock that I borrowed from you. I'm going to take the cash. I'm going to stick it in my pocket. And you're going, wait, 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 wait. You borrowed that guy's stock. How are you going to give it back? Well, here's the idea. You sell it, pocket the cash, then you wait till the end of the contract you have with Bob to give his shitty stocks back. And you're hoping that by the time the contract comes due and you have to give Bob his 10 shitty stocks, that the price is going to go down and you're going to be able to rebuy those stocks for a lower price give them back to Bob so that he's made whole and then keep the change in your pocket. So you've made money. So that's essentially what a short is. That's what a short squeeze is. And I don't want to get any more DMs about it because if you're DMing me after this, you're not listening to the episodes. If you're not listening to the episodes, 
You're dead to me. So now we know what a short squeeze is. We know what a short is. So what happened here? How did a subreddit of lunatics abuse the mechanics of a short squeeze to make GameStop value shoot up, go crazy, and, and fuck over hedge funds, yada, yada, yada? Well, that's essentially what they did, right? They started buying up the GameStop stock. They started driving the price up, which in turn caused a scramble on hedge funds like, uh, like Melvin Capital, for instance, to try to race to cover those positions to start buying the stock before the price went too high so they could uh, pay the stock back. And that causes kind of an infinite loop there, which only kind of reinforces the rising price. And the reason that uh, Reddit did this, the, the line of reasoning was, and this makes sense, and this is what I told my friend, is that it makes sense, but it's also coming from a lunatic's mouth. But the short interest on GameStop, i.e. The, the amount of shorts, the amount of betting that the price would go down, the short interest on GameStop was over 100% of the float. And when I say float, I'm talking about the number of shares available for trading of the stock. So that means that there was actually short interest, i.e. gambling that the price would go down on the stock, that actually exceeded the amount of stock that was actually out there to trade with. So this is actually kind of honestly an idiotic move by the hedge fund. It's, it's ridiculous. They got cocky, essentially. Here, they got really fucking cocky. And a bunch of lunatics on a web forum decided to take advantage of this. Now, I actually went back because I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, Deep Fucking Value, aka Keith Gill, sort of kind of orchestrated this or at least planted the seeds of this months in advance at least five months prior to this, probably a little bit more. And he reckoned that due to the new management of GameStop, i.e. The, the new CEO, George Sherman, and the new uh, large ownership interest of billionaire Ryan Cohen, also the founder of Chewy, he said that, he, he posited that under this new management, the company actually does have good fundamentals and has a hopeful outlook to reposition itself to make GameStop a worthwhile company to invest in going forward, thus making GME vulnerable to a short squeeze because of all the short interest that was on it. Like I said, short interest over 100% of the float. So I actually, I, I am suspecting, I'm putting on my tinfoil hat here. This is, welcome back to the Potential Financial Crimes podcast, where we investigate potential financial crimes. Uh, I posit that it's possible that Keith Gill sort of orchestrated this or attempted to orchestrate it. I don't think that he legally can be held accountable by the SEC um, for this, nor do I really think that he should be, to be honest. Um, because I like fucking over hedge funds as much as the next guy. But he's being investigated by the SEC right now for manipulation. I think he'll squirm out of that. Probably deserves to squirm out of it. But yeah, this was all going to fuck over large hedge funds like Melvin Capital, who had this ridiculous short position on GameStop, right? So... The idea was, the idea that these lunatics on this web forum had gotten into their heads was that when Melvin's contracts started coming due, they could end up unable to afford to cover their positions, which would render them insolvent. And this kind of was the inspiring log on the fire for these internet communities, right? Um, and ultimately, they were right. Now, I don't think that they were as, ex as successful as they were kind of hoping to be. And I know this is still sort of a ongoing thing, but I'm gonna tell you right now that Garfonomics, we at Garfonomics, we understand how capitalism works and we understand that 
organized retail investing will always be attacked by the all expanding forces of capitalism, right? And the forces of capitalism are going to be those with capital, those with the huge, huge private uh, ownerships. So the hedge funds, right? Uh, the media, the state, all of these arms of capitalism are going to work together to suppress organized retail investing, especially if it's being done for nefarious purposes like doing a funny prank on Melvin Capital or Citadel or whoever, right? So this kind of became self-evident, right? I started seeing news stories that were just laughably ridiculous when this started taking off. I started seeing news stories saying that, oh, uh, uh, actually Melvin Capital has actually covered their GameStop positions. You can stop now. You can stop now, funny meme men from the internet. You can stop buying GameStop because it's not going to work because they covered their positions. No, that was obviously not true. There was no way that Melvin could have covered their positions at that time. The news, the media lies to you, right? And it has to because its overall function is to preserve the concentration of wealth to those who already have wealth. That's how capitalism works. So you started seeing ridiculous news stories like that. And I think that story has kind of started to fade from the limelight. Um, it was met with a lot of like kind of silly um, or not silly. I would, should say mocking, right? Ridicule because it's just patently false. And then I started seeing a news story. I remember one that I saw on Twitter. I came across a CNBC news article that had said the headline I can't remember exactly what the headline was, but it was something along the lines of um, Reddit users target silver as next target or something like that. Something that was just not true. I tried looking into it. I, Lord forgive me, I actually went to Wall Street Bets, the forum, and looked at all of the top posts for the past couple of days, did not see a single thing about silver other than them mocking the news for saying that they were trading silver when they weren't and this was quite obvious to me this this obviously not only were they was the news organized to try to stop these organized retail investors but they were also organized to try to then take advantage of retail investors so I'm sure your parents have asked you something about Reddit or the short squeeze or GameStop or something. And that's what these new news organizations were betting on. They were putting out some ridiculous news story saying something that wasn't true, that Reddit users were now targeting silver as the next GameStop or whatever bullshit headline it was in order to trick your mom and dad to trick boomers into investing in silver as a part of some scheme i'm sure some scam on behalf of some uh large interest owner in silver slv i'm not talking about real silver by the way i'm not talking about people just buying the metal silver i'm talking about paper silver i'm talking about uh silver that you would buy at a stock market it's it's just a piece of paper so obviously some kind of dirty trick right scheme snake oil and it's being done by these large news organizations. So you can all laugh at uh, far-right people, far-right conservatives or, what, or whoever who say things like fake news and stuff. Like, yeah, that's a funny meme. But they're also right, right? Like, the news is fake. It's just lies. It's another arm of capitalism against you. And it will seek to prop that up and help moneyed interests. You're not ever going to get factual, non-biased information. How's that supposed to work? News organizations are owned by companies. They're owned by moneyed interests. They're private entities. Their entire incentive is to lie to you for profit. Not to say everything the news tells you is fake, but I'm just saying... Garfonomics is your news now. I would never lie to you 
unless it was a really funny bit. Not only did the news try to cover this up and try to sell, like, save uh, Melvin Capital's ass, but the actual brokerage firms, and for those who are financially um, illiterate or don't really know what I'm talking about, a broker or a brokerage is a, um, it's like an intermediary between you and the stock market. It is, think of like your, uh, your TD Ameritrades, your Charles Schwab's, your Vanguard's, your um, even the smaller ones on your phone like uh, Robinhood, Webull. These can be considered brokers, right? You go through them to place trades on the stock market. You can't just go to the stock exchange and say, I want to buy this. You have to meet either, you have to interact with, I should say, a broker in some capacity. Now, a lot of this is automatic and digital, like you just use an app on your phone and buy some stock through your broker. But some of these brokers, some of these firms actually prevented their users, their clients, quote unquote, their clients from trading GameStop stock. Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, those are the ones that I, I distinctly remember actively taking steps to prevent you from trading the stock. And I, I a little fuzzy on TD Ameritrade because I didn't interact with it all that much, but I know for a fact that Robinhood if you were to go to place an order, if you were to so much as place an order of one share of GameStop, you would get an error on your Robinhood app. The management of Robinhood, they came back and they said, oh, we're just protecting our clients from volatility, blah, 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 bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. No, they're trying to prevent organized retail investors from trading that security because they did not want them to drive the price up anymore and keep fucking over these large hedge, hedge funds. That is the only reason they would do that. Do you think that Robinhood or TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab would prevent you from placing a trade that might hurt you? No. You know how I know that? Because they don't do that. You don't hear news stories about that. You don't see that happening. And we've gone through economic crises because of people placing poor investments. And those brokers did nothing to stop them because they don't care. But they will do everything in their power to stop you from fucking over the big guy. They will do nothing to prevent the big guy from fucking you over. So I'm getting a little heated, Ugh. but you know, this is why I don't really, I like to kind of keep the podcast light. I like to have Garfanomics be a fun little place where you can come and enjoy Garfield themed content in a safe and fun environment. But today we're going off the rails. We're getting crazy with it. I'm going into finance topics, economics. This is where the onomics comes in, baby. Anyways, so what, what, what's happening with all of this? Where did we end up? Well, the price is still sort of dropping and rising as people are kind of selling out of their shares. Um, ultimately, Melvin lost about 53-ish percent. Um, They're down from like, or I should say last month, they lost about 53-ish percent. Um, they're starting to mitigate some of that now. But they were down from about $12.5 billion um, to about $6.5 billion as of last month. But again, all of these forces of capitalism conspiring together, thanks to an emergency funds injection from Citadel LC, their partners, hedge fund legend Stephen Cohen and his new project, Point72, now they're back to running with over $8 billion. So this... You know, you see these kinds of lunatics on places like Wall Street Bets and stuff saying, oh, we're going to take them down. We're going to we're going to fight back. We're going to we're going to buy all this stock and we're going to put these companies out of business. Melvin Capital is fine. It's still a billion over an eight billion dollar operating firm. Did you hurt them? Sure. They're down 53 percent. 
but they're still a multi-billion dollar operating firm. And I posit that they probably will continue to be after all of this. I think that this was cool. <laughs> I think this was very cool and I like to see it. We love to see it on this podcast. But the idealist sense that you were going to fight um, these big hedge funds using organized retail investing, that's kind of laughable. The system isn't stacked in your favor and your kind of blind faith to the economic system in which you live in is kind of what is making you the slave. And you're not going to use the tool of retail investing to break your shackles. That's not really going to happen. Um, you know, there's always like a lottery probability that you somehow make a ludicrously uh, amazing investment with a small amount of money and end up becoming like a millionaire or something. Sure, that could happen. But it's also extremely unlikely um, unless you have a lot of money to fuck around with, right? And you can tell this too on a lot of these Wall Street, like on Wall Street bets itself, when people show their positions and stuff, they're, these guys are investing um, tens of thousands of dollars in these things and becoming millionaires, right? They don't exactly represent the average American person. I don't think the average American person has tens of thousands of dollars to gamble with. Um, so you're not really breaking any chains there, um, through the system. I don't think it's really possible to do it through the system. We always posit on this program that the economic system in which we are in is not escapable. You have to migrate, you have to transition to another economic model in order to break away from the negative aspects of this one, because that's just really all there is to it. You're not going to get out through something like this. You did do a really cool and funny meme prank on Melvin Capital, which was awesome. And I like that. I love to see that. You did not destroy Melvin Capital, which is the unfortunate part of this. You did not um, hurt them in an irrecoverable way. And that's what's so unfortunate about this. But, you know, it's a nice meme, and I'm sure a lot of people made out pretty well here. A lot of little uh, millionaires, newly made millionaires running around out there who uh, sold at the right time. You know, good for you. If you're still holding on to these stocks because you want to fuck over hedge funds, uh, more power to you. Uh, if you sold out and became a, uh, a wealthy individual, nice, dude. Nice. But what is the end result of this? So the end result, uh, in Garfonomics expert opinion, the end result is that we suspect that Keith Gill is some sort of snake who's manipulating the market and he's a smart cookie and we don't fault him for it. And we also suspect that going forward, uh, fewer hedge funds are likely to disclose their put options now. I don't think you're really going to have as uh, easy access to the short positions of, of uh, hedge funds. Uh, I think they're going to use uh, SEC rules in a clever way to keep them confidential. This isn't anything new. This is something that hedge funds have done in the past and continue to do now. I think we're just going to see a lot more usage of that. I think they're going to keep a lot more of their short positions under lock and key. Uh, or at least make it uh, very difficult for you to find out that information so that it would be extremely difficult for you to fuck them over by attempting an organized retail investor short squeeze. Um, but yeah, I think this event ultimately is, is going to lead to a lot more um, secrecy in the financial world. And as well as that, I think it's also going to just... Um, fundamentally change trading for retail investors overall. I think there's going to be a lot more protections for large hedge funds and a lot more restrictions placed on individual retail investors like you or me. I think that that is certainly possible. I don't think that's 
out of the realm of possibility in any way, um, shape, or form. And I think it's also probably kind of likely. Um, but other than that, I don't really have too much more to say about it. It's just that this was a funny meme, and we love to see it. Um, just don't get too idealistic about it. I think that that's going to kind of depress a lot of people, is that they thought that this was going to be like a, a great... Um, knee capping force against these these large titans that have you know routinely fucked us in the ass for decades and um i think unfortunately we uh we kind of have to think of more creative ways because i mean i like i said a short squeeze like this um you did get a good swipe in my friend and it was cool it was cool to see you punch melvin capital in the face but um, Melvin Capital is not lying down. They are not unconscious, and they are nowhere near dying. They have gotten up, wiped the blood off their uh, cheek, and they are pretty much fine. Um, again, because of um, you know hedging their bets, orchestrating, uh, it really does seem like a heavy multi-orchestration -or with media, brokerage firms themselves, um, as well as just getting free money from other hedge funds. They got, I mean, think about it. They went from $12.5 billion to about $6.5 billion. And then Citadel, uh, a bunch of other partners, Stephen Cohen with his fucking stupid ass 0. .72 project, they all just like gave Melvin Capital a couple billion dollars. They were like, ouch, that looks like it hurts. Here's some money. Oh, now you're fine. Because that's how this works. That's how capitalism works. Come on. Don't be dumb. I'm very excited to see... Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited to see what happens with Keith Gill. I think that'll be interesting. But I think that this is about the, the best and the most concise that I could kind of explain this and put it together. And now I, I think a lot of people might be asking... What the hell does this have to do with the Garfield comic that we read at the beginning of the episode? And I have to apologize to all of our listeners who come here for the funny memes and the funny jokes and the um, insightful satire about the goings-ons of day-to-day. -day. We wanted to do an informed economics finance episode for once. <laughs> Uh, we kind of slip it in here and there, but we wanted to do it for once. And if you give me a second, I will lazily tie back how the Garfield comic that we read earlier ties into this, right? And I will tie it back to this. The last thing said in that comic was, sometimes I'm glad I can't understand you. And this is what I'm going to say to the lunatics at Wall Street Bets. Sometimes I'm glad I don't understand your idealistic, weird, uh, boot-sucking fetish for the system that is oppressing you. You know, a lot of these guys, they're doing pretty good with this system because they kind of, they have a lot of money to fuck around with. But most of you, you're being kind of like fucked over, right? And I'm kind of glad that I don't understand how somebody can be pinned under a boot and worship the person pinning them. I can't tell you how much uh, weird, like, Elon Musk worship memes that I had to sift through like a pile of garbage when looking through that sub to get a little bit more information about what was going on there. It, it's really disgusting, dude. And it's, it's kind of, I hate to say it, it's kind of cringe. Y'all are kind of cringe. But also, nice meme. I liked it. Garfonomics is going to give this meme um, a 9 out of 10. It was a funny prank. I liked it. Uh, it doesn't get a 10 out of 10, though, because uh, the people doing the prank are really weird and kind of dumb. Um, so, yeah, not going to get out a 10 out of 10 from us. But, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it. That's how it connects to the comic. Sometimes I'm glad I don't understand them. Uh, it also connects to the comic in that pretty soon you are not going to be able to understand hedge funds. They are going to hide their positions away under lock and key, as they have done um, routinely in the past under certain situations. I think they're just going to ramp that up. 
Uh, don't buy silver. Silver is a joke. Um, yeah, that's all I got, baby. So we're going to ramp it up. We're going to start doing uh, more episodes soon. I'm going to get a new lineup of guests. Uh, we've got a couple guests in the pipeline on the way. We are just working out the ins and outs of that venture. Um, but yeah, anyways, thanks for listening to Garfonomics, the world's best official, unofficial Garfield-based economics and politics podcast. Uh, this has been your monthly rant. I feel like we need a good solo rant once a month, and then we can go back to the other episodes where we have guests and we're having fun and we're talking about sucking each other's dicks or whatever. But I think this episode, it was good to kind of bring it back, explain to some of our listeners who honestly kind of ironically don't even engage with economics at all or don't even, I shouldn't say economics, but don't, don't really engage with like finance at all. Uh, I wanted to kind of break it down and explain it to you. And I also wanted to explain how this whole thing was kind of lame. But it was also kind of cool. See ya.